What's up, peeps? It's me. I'm back. Um, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is staying safe, and I hope everybody is being smart. I hope everybody is getting to know themselves. I hope you are loving yourself, taking care of yourself, and taking care of each other. Okay? Now, uh, some of you have already seen the video that I did the last video that I posted where I talk about uh, 2024 is about to pop off um, and uh, some of you have been over in the community tab and you've seen some of the stuff that I've posted in the community tab so I'm just gonna let first of all I'm just gonna let y'all in on some of the stuff that's going on Healing Legacy and you know Healing Legacy is also a part of Black Rain Media Group Black Rain Media Group is my uh, uh, publishing company my consultation company for the publishing uh, where we do our design work and all of that that's Black Rain Media Group but um, it, it, I'm Black Rain Media Group and I'm also Healing Legacy so uh, if you've seen the change on the title uh, of this channel I just want everybody to know that it, it's pretty much all together right um, but anyway I just launched the website for Healing Legacy. I already have the, the, the website for Black Rain Media Group, but I just launched the website for Healing Legacy. And um, I launched the website, and on top of launching the website, I am now offering consultations. I am offering consultations for anybody who wants to talk, anybody who wants to uh, 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 wants any kind of help on this healing journey, on this th uh, journey of self-discovery. I have now started uh, consultations. And the consultation start at $55 for an hour. And, well, you know, an hour or whatever. However long it takes for us to talk. But I'm just saying for an hour. But um, there are consultations for, of course, self-discovery, for, for you to get to know yourself, for you to find out who you truly are, for you to find out the things that you truly like, the things that you truly love, for you to find out what your dreams and goals really are, and for you to discover who you are, not only as a human being, but who you are as a spiritual being, so that you can begin to understand the power that you hold within, right? Um, then there's also relationship consultations where you you know you get to you you, you you get to we get to unravel together the mysteries of relationships relation your relationship with yourself which is the first relationship that you need to be concerned about is the relationship that you have with yourself the relationship that you have with family the rich the relationship that you have with friends the relationship that you may have with your um your significant other, the relationship that you have with your children, the relationship that you have with money, uh, because a lot of people are, are, are dealing with uh, financial situations, and the reason why is because a lot of people don't have the right kind of relationship with money, right? Then we go even deeper, and we get into uh, the aspects of shadow work, healing, healing from trauma, healing generational trauma, uh, physical healing, healing different physical ailments and all of that so um yes and we are now offering consultations uh healing legacy is offering cons consultations so um the email for healing legacy as well as the website will be down in the description box okay as well as all the other information that's there the email has changed of course and now it's just the healing um the uh, Healing Legacy uh, email. It's no longer the undil Undiluted TV email. It's the Healing Legacy email. Um, so all that information, uh, along with the PayPal, along with the, the, the Cash App and all of that, it's still the same Cash App. It's still the blank, same Black Rain Cash App because it's all coming to the, to, the, to the same organization. That's me, Black Rain. Um, but all of that information will be down in the description box. Okay? So... What I want to do, this is this is is what all of J J January was all about. All of January was about me resting. It was about me uh, uh, getting these this all of this information. It was all about me being in contact with my higher self, so that I know which direction I'm meant to go in as far as healing legacy is concerned. That's where the, the, the website came from. That's where the consultations came from. And that's where this series about shadow work is coming from. Because the one thing that I have learned and the one thing that I have 
found out and understood with all the information that I've gathered and all the, uh, the, 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 the downloads that I've gotten, if that's what you want to call them or whatever, is that we cannot be our highest self. We cannot be the best, best versions of ourselves. We cannot manifest these things that we want to manifest. We cannot begin the process, the, 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 the uh, journey of changing our reality until we do some shadow work. Because that shadow stuff, that stuff that we're hiding from ourselves, that stuff that we don't want to look at, that stuff that we don't want to deal with, that stuff will keep cropping up. It'll keep popping up in our reality. If we don't deal with it, if we don't learn how to mesh the shadow self, the shadow you, with the you that you try to show everybody else, there comes a time when you have to in, in, integrate the two, when you have to mesh the two, when those two have to come together because it's, it's both parts of those two. It's both parts of them that make the whole you. So you have to understand that your shadow self is very, very important. And it's not anything for you to be afraid of. It's not anything for you to run from. Um, it's not, it, it, you know, yeah, you got to deal with some darkness. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with whatever traumas that that, that that shadow person is dealing with. Is that shadow self is hiding or whatever. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with that. But in order for you to truly heal. And in order for you to truly be able to move forward and live your best life here in this 3D realm, you're going to have to deal with that shadow. You're going to have to deal with that shadow self. And you might have to go into the dark to deal with it. But what, what have we already learned? What we've already learned is uh, uh, some of uh, the best stuff that we've ever been able to do came out of darkness. Light comes out of darkness. There's nothing in the dark for us to really be afraid of. So I want to start this series tonight, right? And I want to start by giving you just some, some basic uh, fundamental in information as far as shadow work and your shadow self is concerned, right? So th that's where we're going to start tonight. We're going to start at the beginning. There's always the best to start at the beginning. You can't build a house unless you lay a foundation. So we're going to lay a foundation tonight as far as shadow work is concerned, okay? Now, okay, hold on a minute, you guys. Let me bring this up. All right, here we go. Here we go. Um, and the, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to this article in Medical News Today, November the 8th, 2023, medically re re reviewed by Yalda. Safaye, MD, MHHP by Zahn Villanez, and it was updated November the 8th, 2023. And of course, I'll have it linked down in the description box because I don't know if I'm going to read this whole thing. But um, this is what we're going to talk about. It says, What is shadow work? What to know, right? Okay, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I got a text for my daughter, so y'all hold on a minute. See what she talking about right quick. All right. So now let's get into this. It says, what is shadow work? What to know? And then um, the, the caption says what it is. Benefits, ways to practice for beginners, prompts and exercises in spirituality, and then the summary. Right? Um, now, like I said, I don't know whether I'm going to read all of that or not. But um, it will be linked in the description box so you can go back to it and you can refer back to it and you can read the entire article. It says, shadow work is a type of psychotherapy that focuses on the parts of the psyche that people often keep hidden, such as trauma and resentment. Some people may refer to this as the shadow self. So first and foremost, everybody needs to understand that we all have a shadow self. All of us, every last one of us, no matter how healed we might be, uh, no matter how much work we've done on the inner us, uh, no matter how well we know ourselves or whatever, we all have a shadow self. 
And shadow work is not something that's once and w once and done. Shadow work is not something that you do one time and then you never have to do it again. You constantly have to check yourself. You constantly have to go and check in with your shadow self to make sure that there's not something there that you're not looking at, that you're not paying attention to, or that you're trying to ignore. Okay? The psychoanalyst Carl Jung first developed the concept. Jung used the term shadow self to describe the things people repress or do not like to acknowledge. The things that people repress or do not like to acknowledge. He theorized that it is a counterweight to the persona, which is the self that people present to others. So there's your persona, which is the you that everybody sees, the you that you want everybody to see, the you that you present to others, and then there's your shadow self that you kind of keep hidden, that you kind of don't want people to know about. The you that even you don't want to acknowledge, that even you don't want to deal with, right? Although the shadow self can include negative impulses, such as anger and resentment, trauma, all of that, Jung believed that it also held, holds the potential for, pos for positive impulses, such as creativity. And I want you to think about, think about some artists, think about uh, musical, musical artists, think about people who do drawings and sculptors and paintings and all of that. And think about how some of these people have come forward and said during their darkest times, during the worst times in their lives, during the time when they, they, when, 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 when they were having the most trouble or the most struggle or whatever, is when they were the most creative. Is when they created the most beautiful picture or the most beautiful music. Why? Because there's something to be said uh, about your shadow self there may be things in your shadow self that you can use to make your life better there may be things in your shadow self that you can use to motivate you and propel you to the next level but because you don't want to deal with it because you don't even want to acknowledge it you don't know enough about your shadow self to see the power that it really contains because a lot of your power is in your shadow self. Why? Because like we've already found out, a lot of your power is in the dark. The power in the womb to develop that baby and develop that human being and make sure that that human being has everything that it needs to, to, to survive out here in this real world. All of that takes place in the dark. When seeds are growing in the ground, everything that that seed needs so that that seed can flourish once it comes up out of the ground, all of that takes place in the dark. So your shadow self may be holding, may be containing the bulk of your power. Okay? Now just listen. Although the shadow self can include negative impulses such as anger and resentment, Jung believed that it also holds the potential for positive impulses such as creativity. He felt that the shadow self is integral to a person's experience of the world and their relationships. He also thought that a person could gain a better understanding of themselves and become more balanced by working with their shadow self. Okay, what is shadow work? Shadow work comes from the concept of the shadow self, which originates in Jungian uh, psychology. According to Jung, a personality includes the persona. So part of your personality is your persona. Your persona is that image. You understand what I'm saying? Or that part of you that you present to the world, that you present to everybody else. According to Jung, a personality includes the persona, which is the personality that people show to the public, and the shadow self, which remains private or hidden. Unlike the persona, the shadow self often includes traits that a person does not like to show. 
Okay, but this is the thing. This is the kicker. Just because you don't like to show them, just because you don't like for people to see them, does not mean that they don't exist. It does not mean that those traits, it does not mean that those behaviors, those habits don't exist. It just means that you're hiding them. You don't want to show them. But it does not mean that they don't ex exist. And because they exist, at some point or the other, they're going to come out. And they usually come out when, e when you either least expect it or when you least want them to come out. That's the reason why you have to go in there and you have to deal with them. However, John did not view the shadow as a negative or shameful part of a person's personality. To him, it was an important part of their psyche. So there's nothing to be ashamed of because you have a shadow self. There's nothing to be ashamed of because there are things about you that you want to keep hidden. Because there are things about you that even you don't want to deal with. That even you don't want to really go look at. There's nothing shameful about that, but you need to deal with them. You need to stop being ashamed and start embracing your shadow self. The goal of shadow work is to assimilate the shadow and the person so that a person can learn how to manage impulses they usually ignore such as anger or greed. Jung also believed that the collective unconscious, inf unconscious influences the shadow. The collective unconscious is a Jungian idea that refers to the collective memories and impulses of society as a whole. As a result, systematic systemic systemic issues such as racism also fit into Jung's idea of what the shadow self com com comprises. So even things that are going on in society may have impacted your shadow self. And because of that, there are certain things that you try to hide. There are certain things, there are certain behaviors, there are certain beliefs that you try to keep hidden from other people because of the experiences that you have had in society, in society or because of the collective consciousness. Just as shadow work might help a person confront the parts of their personality that they usually avoid, John thought it might, all, might, might allow them to address prejudices and impulses resulting from broader social ills. Think about that for a minute. Now I'm not going to stay long because I want to make this short and sweet so you can get it. Benefits of shadow work. As the shadow is a concept, it is not something that scientists can tangibly measure. It is also subjective and varies based on context. For example, something that is acceptable in one culture might be taboo in another, which affects whether it becomes part of the shadow self. Right? So, some of the sexual practices that are okay and acceptable in the United States are, are, are actually taboo in other countries, in other cultures. Right? So, your shadow self may not have anything going on as far as a, 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 a shame or, 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 or a guilt or anything like that about your sexual practice or sex uh, as a whole. Whereas somebody that lives in one of those cultures that thinks that some of these sexual practices are taboo, they may have issues in their shadow self that they're hiding or that they're trying to avoid because certain sexual practices that they may be involved in or that they want to be involved in are taboo in their culture. So that's what that's what that means, right? For example, something that is acceptable in one culture might be taboo in another, which affects whether it becomes part of the shadow self. As a result, there's not much scientific research on the effectiveness of shadow work. 
Instead, most research on this approach emphasizes how a person might use it to solve specific challenges. For example, a 2022 paper argues that creative writing may help a person process trauma and that drawing on Jung's understanding of the unconscious may be particularly helpful. Anecdotally, practitioners of shadow work say that it helps them with one, identifying and counter, uh, encountering negative personal, tra uh, person, personal traits as well as negative traits that society has instilled in them. Learning to be two, learning to be more accepting of others. Three, understanding the challenges other people face with their shadow selves. Four, confronting trauma, grief, and other challenging emotions. Five. Understanding how society, childhood, and various relationships influence their lives and interaction. In some cases, components of the shadow of the shadow self may motivate good acts. For example, a person may find that confronting their implicit biases, which they may not usually think about, can help them work to change them. Similarly. Being more aware of their anger may help a person channel that anger for good, such as by fighting for a just cause. But see, you can't channel it, you can't uh, 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 turn it into anything good if you don't first acknowledge it and deal with the fact that there are issues in your shadow self. There are issues with your shadow self says ways to practice shadow work and I'm gonna stop here ways to practice shadow work shadow work is not a common practice and few people are trained in this type of psychotherapy it begins with a willingness to explore the shadow self even if a person finds doing so scary or uncomfortable some specific strategies include right and I and, and I'm here so that we can kind of work together to understand that it's really really not scary Right now, for people who are dealing with deep, deep, deep trauma, for people who are dealing with one very traumatic event or one very traumatic period in their life or one traumatic event that expands that, that that extends over several years, okay, it 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 it, it can be a, a a little rough to 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 have to go and deal with that. But it's not something to be afraid of. Because in order for you to truly heal, and in order for you to take your power back, and in order for you to be able to live your life to the fullest, you're going to have to deal with it, right? But these are some of the specific strategies. Dream analysis. Jung highly valued dreams as tools for accessing the unconscious and the, and the shadow self. A person can log their dreams and look for repeating themes or symbols to see whether they notice aspects of their mind that they usually ignore. A person may also want to seek insight from a Jungian analyst. Journaling. Journaling can help a person explore their unconscious thoughts and desires by looking for patterns and themes. A person may follow prompts tell stories, talk about their day, or engage in their in free association. Psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis was, psychoanalysis was, according to Jung, the ideal avenue for exploring the shadow self. In, psycho, in psychoanalytic psychotherapy, an analyst helps a person interact, it, interpret dream archetypes, symbols in their unconscious mind, and the true motives behind their actions. Sand tray therapy. Sand tray therapy uses sand trays to promote meditative mindfulness and to encourage a person to create scenes that accurate, accurately depict their inner life. This may help them explore their unconscious mind and shadow self. It is important to note that it may not always be possible or advisable to do shadow work alone. When a person has trauma or serious mental health concerns, they need support from a professional. Shadow work for beginners. I'm going to read this part right here right quick. In Jungian psychology, shadow work involves the assistance of a psychoanalyst who guides a person through their, their shadow self. 
Beginners may find it beneficial to seek advice from a trained practitioner, either a Jungian psychoanalyst or someone practicing a more contemporary version of shadow work. However, it may be difficult to find a specialist as the practice is unknown. Some other tips for beginners include going slowly, being mindful that shadow work can be difficult and upsetting, practic practicing self-care and, and compassion when unexpected thoughts or feelings come up, approaching the shadow self with a spirit of curiosity and acceptance. It is also worth noting that shadow work is just one way to explore the characteristics that a person perceives as shameful or undesirable. Many types of therapy, including co cognitive behavioral therapy, can help a person better understand their self-perceptions and make their implicit beliefs more explicit. Your inner beliefs more outward. Okay? Now, there, there's more on this, but I'm going to go to another article that's actually inside this article. Okay, and this is in Journal Psyche. Let me see the date that they did this because it's not showing up. And I'm not going to read all of this either. Okay, I don't see the date on this one. But, um,. It says the Jungian model of the psyche. Few people have had as much influence on modern psychology as Carl Jung. We have Jung to thank for concepts like extroversion and introversion, archetypes, modern dream analysis, and the collective unconscious. Psychological terms coined by Jung include the archetype, the complex, synchronicity, and it is from his work that the Myers-Briggs type indicator was developed, a popular staple of personality tests today. Among Jung's most important work was his in-depth analysis of the psyche, which he explained as follows. By psyche, I understand the totality of all psychic processes, conscious as well as unconscious. Separating the concept from conventional concept of the mind which is generally limited to the processes of the conscious brain alone okay let's go down here where he talks about the shadow self because I'm going to leave this link in the description box as well so you can read this entire article as well because it's very important it says the self the self according to Jung was the sum total of the psyche with all this potential included this is the part of the psyche that looks forward, that contains the drive toward fulfillment and wholeness. In this, the self was said to drive the process of, indi of individuation, the quest of the individual to reach his or her fullest potential. In this area, Jung once again is seen to differ from Freud. In Freudian theory, the ego is responsible for the above processes, process and forms the axis on which a person's individual psyche spins. Whereas in, Jung, in Jungian theory, the ego is just one part which rises out of the inf infinitely more complex self. Persona. Jung said that the persona is an element of the personality which arises for reasons of adaptation or personal convenience. If you have certain masks you put on in various situations, such as the side of yourself you present at work or to the family, that is a persona. The persona can be seen as the public relations part of the ego, the part that allows us to interact socially in a variety of situations with relative ease. So, it's, so basically he's saying is the persona is those different masks or those different faces that you wear for society, for social in in interaction, no matter who you're dealing with. You might have a face that you wear at work. You might have a face that you wear with your family. You might have a face that you wear uh, uh, with your loved ones. You might have a face that you wear with people that you don't like. You might have a face that you wear on social media. That type of thing. That's the persona. 
Those who identify too strongly with their personas, however, can run into problems. Think of the celebrity who becomes too involved with his or her self as the star. The person who cannot leave work at home or the academic who seems condescending to everyone. Doing the aforementioned can stunt someone's personal growth a great deal as other aspects of the self then cannot properly develop crippling overall growth. So you can't get too caught up in your persona. You understand what I'm saying? That face that you're showing to, to, to different people in different situations, you can't get too caught up in that because then you begin to believe that that's the real you and other areas of yourself, other areas of the totality of who you are won't be able to develop like they should, right? This persona usually grows from the parts of people that wished once to please teachers, parents, and other authority figures. And as such, it leans heavily toward embodying only one's best qualities, leaving those negative traits which contradict the persona to form the shadow. So basically, he sh he's saying that a lot of times these, these personas come because uh, of the idea that you had when you wanted to please your parents or you wanted to please your teachers or you wanted to please society or you wanted to be accepted by everybody or there was a certain group of people that you wanted to be accepted by so you put on a certain face and this face is usually the very very best of you like that old saying when you put your best foot forward right but then that leaves those things that you consider negative about yourself, that leaves them behind and it is those things that form the shadow self. Right? The persona usually grows from the parts of people that wished once to please teachers, parents, and other authority figures and as such it leans heavily toward embodying only one's best qualities leaving those negative traits which contradict the persona to form the shadow. The shadow. Those traits that we dislike or would rather ignore come together to form what John called the shadow or the shadow self. This part of the psyche, which is also influenced heavily by the collective unconscious, is a form of complex, excuse me, and is generally the complex most accessible by the conscious mind. Jung did not believe the shadow to be without purpose or merit. He felt that where there is light, there must also be a shadow, right? And remember, in one of the past videos, and I'll link it, the one that I did on shadow work, we talked about how you can't have a shadow without light. It's impossible to have a shadow without light. And we actually went into the science of it. And I'll link that, uh, that, that video down in the description. Right? Joe did not believe the shadow to be without purpose or marriage. He felt that where there is light, there must also be shadow. Which is to say that the shadow has an important role to play in balancing the overall psyche. Whether a well-developed shadow side, without a well-developed shadow side, without a well-developed shadow side, a person can easily become shallow and extremely preoccupied with the opinions of others. A walking persona. So now you're not a real person. Now you're not a real individual. Now all you care about is what other people think. So you just become shallow, you become hollow, you understand what I'm saying? And you just continuously put on these masks and put on these faces so that you can please people. So that you can be accepted by people. So that people will like you. And it's very easy to become very narcissistic when you get into that area right there. Just as conflict is necessary to advance the plot of any good m novel, light and dark are necessary to our personal growth. So this is letting you know that your shadow self is not something that you need to be afraid of. 
It's not something that you need to be hiding from. It's not something that, 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 that you need to be scared of or you need to be scared to go and acknowledge. It's letting you know that your shadow self is very, very important. And that's the reason why you need to do that shadow work so that you can get to know your shadow self. So that you can pull all the positive that's in the darkness. So that you can pull all of that positive out. So that you can go in the darkness and see the light that exists. Because it has to be light there in order for there to be a shadow. Right? John believed that not wanting to look at their shadows directly. Many people project them onto others. That's how we get all of this projection. That's how we get all of this judgment of other people. And you projecting what's really, really going on with you on somebody else. So the jealousy and the envy, you understand what I'm saying? That you might be feeling, you project that on somebody else and try to make it seem like everybody is just jealous and envious of you. When in reality, you're the one that's harboring all of this jealousy and envy. John believed that not wanting to look at their shadow se- shadows directly, many people project them onto others. Meaning that the qualities we often cannot stand in others, we have in ourselves and wish not to see. Because one thing you'll learn in this, it, it, when you deal with spirituality on your spiritual journey, on your journey to knowing who you really are, is that everything around you is really a reflection of you. So if there's somebody in your experience, in your human experience, that you just can't stand, they're constantly bringing you trouble, they're constantly bringing you drama and strife or whatever, nine times out of ten, it's because they're reflecting something that you see or that you know is in you and you don't want to accept it. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to deal with it. John believed that not wanting to look at their shadows directly, many people project them onto others. Meaning that the qualities we often cannot stand in others, we have in ourselves and just wish not to see it. To truly grow as a, as a person, one must seek such willful blindness to one's shadow and attempt to balance it with the persona. So you need to balance your, your, your shadow self with the face or the, or, the, or the mask or the person that you want to present to society. The person that you want everybody to see and everybody to accept. Right? You need to find a way to balance the two. You need to find a way to bring them together. You need to find a way to embrace your shadow self. Right? Now that's all. I mean. It's more to it. But that, that's all I'm reading right now because I just wanted to read that specific part about the, uh, the persona and the shadow, right? Now, um, like I said, I'm not going to stay here long. So that's all I wanted to do for this first part of the series is I wanted to define uh, shadow The shadow self, I wanted to define shadow work. I wanted to give you some tips as far as shadow work is concerned. Um, And I just wanted to let you know that this is what we're going to be delving into. We're going to be delving into uh, the need and why there is such a great need to do this shadow work if you want to be the fullness of yourself. And in order for you to know the real you, in order for you to really truly know yourself and know the power that is within you, 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 you're going to have to acknowledge and, and, and get into studying your shadow and get into these things about yourself that you don't want to look at, these things about yourself you don't want to deal with, these feelings and these emotions and all of this kind of stuff that you're trying to hide and keep from everybody else, whether it comes from trauma, whether it comes from a, a societal condition, conditioning, whether it comes from your childhood, whatever. You need to get into it and you need to figure out what's really going on with your shadow so you can deal with this stuff. And so that you can become this whole full person. Because only then can you truly heal and and move forward to living your very best life. Okay? So like I said, those two articles will be linked down in the description box. You can go to them. You can read them in their entirety. Um, 
the website for healing legacy would be down in the description box as well as the new email as well as of course uh, um, the information about the publishing company if you decide that you want to publish uh, we're, as a matter of fact let me go ahead and do a plug right now we've got a 20% sale off of all publishing packages right now so if you're interested in publishing um, the information for the publishing company will be down in the description box uh, if you're in interested in some consultation, if you're ready to talk to somebody, if you're ready to get some stuff off your chest, if you're ready to uh, uh, to get into this journey of self-discovery and this journey of healing, like I said, the website uh, for Healing Legacy will be down in the description box. And you can go there and you can see what we're offering as far as the consultations is concerned. But we've got to get this healing done. We've got to get this healing done on an individual level so that we can come together collectively as healed human beings so that we can come together collectively so that we can heal our world. So that we can heal the world around us. So that we can help heal our family members and our loved ones and our friends and all of that. Right? Because the whole consists of each individual part so therefore each individual part has got to be whole right all right so that's what i wanted to bring y'all tonight we i will be back in the next couple of days and we'll take it to the next level as far as shadow work is concerned all right uh, like I said, all the information will be down in the description box. Y'all, please like this video. Please share this video. Um, let, let's kind of try to, uh, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, this. I'm trying to get the word out. And I'm trying to get the message out. So please like the video. Uh, please share this in a vi in this video, like I, sh like I said, like I always say. Uh, don't just share it on social media, but share it with your family. Share it with your friends. So that we can get this message out. So that we can get this information out. So that we can all live better lives. So that we can all take our power back and know what power we have. Alright? So until we talk again, y'all be good to yourselves. Love yourselves. It is very, very important that you love yourself. That's the reason why the shadow work is important. You have to love the shadow you. You have to love all of you just as you are. Love yourselves. Take care of yourself. Love each other and take care of each other. And I'll talk to you guys soon.